Hi. Thanks for being so patient. Um, there's a bit of a transportation malfunction on the way here, and I got pretty familiar with the loading dock, um, <laughs> which is farther, I think, than my hotel from where I needed to be. Um, OK, thank you. Uh, so thanks for waiting. Thanks for coming. I'm really excited to be here today. I'm Kim McAuliffe. Uh, and today I want to explore the topic of significance in your work and why you should care about that. So a bit about my background first. I grew up with games, starting with the Texas Instruments 99 and the Apple IIe. Um, I got a BS in computer science from Florida State. Um, I worked for four years as a software developer. And then I went to the Savannah College of Art and Design uh, for grad school because I thought I wanted to be an animator, but that didn't work out. Um, and since then, I've spent 11 years in the industry uh, working on various games. And the first place that I worked was Gryptonite Games. Um, this was a, a handheld studio. At one point, it was the premier handheld developer in North America or, or something like that. Uh, and I was there in its heyday. We made games for uh, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, 3DS, uh, PSP. Um, these are some of the titles that I worked on, and it was a great way to get exposure to many kinds of genres and uh, gameplay types because you were working on something new like every three to six months. Um, after that, I moved upstairs to their sister company, Amaze Entertainment, um, and there I worked on a couple of Wii games before going to Zipper Interactive where I ended up working on SOCOM 4. Um, and then I went to Microsoft Studios, where I worked on ConnectNet Geo TV and Project Spark. Uh, after leaving Microsoft, I worked remotely for a while on a Facebook game, and then I started my own uh, company about a year ago uh, because I wanted to make games that, uh, that were different. They inspired people to care about each other and other people, and, and they really suited uh, what I felt was meaningful. So what I'm going to talk about today is uh, why significance matters, what significance means in your work, um, how significance is different for everyone, um, things people mistake for significance, um, how your, what you find significant changes over time, um, when to recognize that that change has happened and what to do about it, and then share some of my personal stories about uh, my pursuit of significance. So um, significance has a really sp specific de <laughs> definition um, for everyone personally, but in a general sense, um, the initial definition that I want to give significance is meaningful work. Um, and why is this important? Um, meaningful work is important because it's... Uh, the lack of it is detrimental to our well-being. Um, it makes us happier. Uh, significance is not making tons of cash, uh, having the goal to only ever work on AAA titles, uh, becoming an industry name, or loving your perfect job so much that it never feels like work. So why is it not making tons of cash? You know, the lack of money sucks, but so does being stuck in a job just for the paycheck, uh, especially if it's causing you physical and mental issues from prolonged crunch. Um, you're bored, but you can't, you won't take a pay cut to try something you have less experience in. Um, or you're just, you're just stuck in the golden handcuffs and you can't keep up with your expenses without the salary you have right now. Um, so significance isn't or shouldn't be only working on AAA titles. Um, these look great on a resume and they open doors, but it can limit you in that it makes it hard, again, to switch genres if you've only ever worked on one kind of AAA game, uh, because that new genre in the AAA space will be looking for top talent. Um, you know, it can drain your enthusiasm in the AAA space when budget constraints and the sea of stakeholders um, drive your game 
your design into terrible directions because something came out that has a new feature that you have to match because it's a competitor. Uh, and then the current player expectations of like increasingly better gameplay and visuals uh, with the same amount of playable hours at the same price means that margins are tightening and hours are lengthening and innovation becomes almost prohibitively expensive. Uh, significance isn't being an industry name. Uh, being famous has its perks, but at the end, or as an end goal, it's pretty empty. Uh, no matter how well, well known you are, someone thinks you're overrated. Uh, building your brand is smart, but seeking fame for its own sake isn't the best way to find it. It tends to just make you unlikable. Uh, and you're better off making friends and networking um, because the people that know you and will vouch for you and go out on a limb and recommend you for a job are your best resource when you need that new job. So significance is also not loving your perfect job so much that it never feels like work because you love it all the time and you want to marry it. Um, I hate this bullshit. Um, <laughs> the idea that if you love your job, it will never feel like work is a myth. Uh, even if you love your job, work is work. And some days you won't feel like doing it. It doesn't mean that you're in the wrong place or that you lack passion. And uh, frankly, not everybody has the ability or the privilege to land their ideal job. Um, they might be unable to go back to school because they're supporting a family, or they might be too junior to achieve those goals uh, yet. Um, it doesn't mean that they can't find significance. So on that note, significance can be found in interim or imperfect jobs. Um, here's some questions to ask yourself to try to find that significance. Um, do you get to help others? Can you be kind? Does what you do have impact? Uh, are you learning skills you, you can use later? Are you being exposed to a field you wouldn't have chosen on your own? And are you learning to appreciate the craft and take pride in your work, like whatever it is? Um, I talked to a lot of people when uh, putting this talk together, and one of them was uh, a metals and jewelry instructor that it's sort of like I'm apprenticing under her and taking a bunch of her classes. And she had a comment about um, casting. Like one of the ways that you can make jewelry is to carve something in wax and then cast it and then make a mold of it and basically make that same thing many times. And you might get to a point if you're early in your career where you're just making molds of someone else's work and filling them with wax and continually making that same thing over and over again. But it's important and the way to find significance in that is to take pride in the excellence of technique and get better at that and uh, just really hone your craft. So significance is not all these things. There's nothing wrong with them, but they are better bonus objectives than primary goals. So I went looking on the internet for some representations of significance, which a lot of times uh, was represented as purpose. Um, and so I, I sought the internet's opinion on and wanted to see if it matched up with how I felt about purpose and significance. And it's pretty close um, to where I landed, which is, you know, what am I uniquely suited to do to make the world a better place? Um, and yes, when, when I did have briefly for a while back at Microsoft a job that I was super engaged with and super excited about, this is what it was like. You know, you woke up every day and you couldn't wait to get to work. Um, I also consulted people I knew on the internet. Um, and this, these are some of the answers that I got back. Um, setting personal achievable goals with uh, gameplay designs as opposed to only trying to hit the moving targets of reviews and Metacritic and uh, public opinion, um, having impact, uh, helping others, um, making a difference in someone else's life, especially in this case, um, girls who previously were not interested in STEM because they were afraid to be uh, a minority. So again, sort of impact, but also like 
not just impact, but significant to like current events. Um, and then reaching communities um, in this context, ind indigenous games for communities that don't have as much access to technology. So again, the common themes between some of these responses were accomplishing personal goals, impacting players and communities, and uh, future developers, um, being current and making a difference. Um, but I realized when I was asking all of those people that they were all pretty senior. And I think that starting out, you have more of a tendency to have your significance focused inward because you're trying to land that job and then you're trying to keep that job and then you're trying to learn as much as you can so you can advance in that job. And uh, that there's nothing wrong with that. But eventually when you get to be mid to senior level, you start, it's not just enough to like throw your life and a bunch of hours into making a game um, and put it out there just to have it be forgotten about two years later. Like you want your work to, to mean something, to have a lasting effect and to leave something behind. Um, and again, this is where I sort of landed personally, which is like, how can I help people with my unique qualifications? Like, I don't, sometimes I feel like I'm not great at any one thing, but I have a specific collection of skills um, that not everyone has. Um, and this is the question that I usually ask myself, especially when I was crunching is, you know, am I doing work that matters? Um, so significance and impact isn't just about your day job. So helping others might not just be about what you're making. It might be about mentoring or inspiring kids or just making the industry a better place. I think everyone's seen this gif. <laughs> um, it's easy to feel like your efforts won't amount to much, but every little change matters. Um, interesting note. When you're looking at quotes on the internet, I had to try to, I wanted to verify these and see if they were actually said by, you know, who the images claimed. And there was a lot of like, yeah, John F. Kennedy said this, but the only factual information I could find actually attributed it to his wife. Uh, side note. Um, and if you only ever help one person, it still means the world to that one person. And then if that, that person is then empowered to help someone else, that's another way that your efforts multiply. And I wanted something that I made to reach people and be helpful, even if it was only ever one person. So yeah, I wanted to make a difference. So, my personal journey, finding my significance, um, as I said a little bit earlier, starting out, significance meant growing as a game designer. I wanted to become a lead. I wanted to learn new genres. I wanted to gain console experience, um, learn even more new tech. Uh, when I went to Zipper, I had the opportunity to work on a prototype, uh, work on a pre-production game for the Vita back when the Vita was just two touchscreens attached to a PS3. Um, and I was super excited about being on a console game from day one. Um, and also to give feedback on the new hardware as it evolved. And then that got shelved and I ended up on SOCOM 4. <laughs> and at that point, I was still learning a new console and learning new tech and I had never been on a shooter before. So in the middle of my career, uh, personal growth was still important to me, but my significance started to shift. So uh, as I said before, I ended up on SOCOM 4, um, and I love the team, and I learned a ton. Um, but the enemy VO, like, it didn't seem to bother anybody else, but it made me really uncomfortable playing my own levels, because as you were shooting them, people would, people would be like, you killed my best friend, and, and uh, these just VO barks that I think everyone else tunes out, but I couldn't stop hearing. Um, and when that other game was shelved, uh, a lot of people told me they were disappointed because they had, they'd been making shooters for years, but now they had families and kids and they really wanted to make something, you know, they were putting so much work into this every day. They wanted to make something that they could share with their kids. Uh, one person had a debug hotkey they could quickly press uh, 
when the game was live that would turn off all the blood if their kid walked into the room. Um, and so at this point, I started thinking about what I didn't want to invest myself in anymore. Around this time, um, Microsoft asked to meet with me at GDC, and uh, the person that I met with did a really great job on selling me on the innovative potential of Project Natal, uh, which, as you know, is now Connect. Um, and I didn't get that job, but I couldn't stop thinking about the gap between what I was doing and like what I really felt would be significant and what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to work in innovative spaces on games, games for everyone, where killing was not the primary mechanic. So uh, I kept applying, but not quite making it through uh, to get that you know, final go ahead. And Connect, Connect officially launched. I went to hear Shannon Loftus speak at a geek girl dinner. Um, she talked about the development of Connect, um, the system, and also of like Connect Adventures which just made me even more determined that I had to be there because she made it sound awesome. And I know it wasn't as awesome as she made it sound, but uh, yeah, I was obsessed. This is like a full-on game dev crush. Uh, I finally got hired on the fourth loop. That's another story. <laughs> um, but when I got to Microsoft, I joined the newly formed kids group. And I had this once in a lifetime development experience working on ConnectNet Geo TV, which was a game TV hybrid uh, where I got to design gameplay to integrate, integrate with the TV series called uh, America the Wild and uh, starring Casey Anderson and his bear Brutus, but they had other episodes with mountain lions and wolverines and these are the mountain lions, uh, Callie and Kaya. Uh, as part of the game, I ended up filming interactive segments with them and I got to be on set um, hanging out with the animals I was able to get the closest to the cubs because they were only kittens. They're 40 pound kittens. Uh, but that was like the best day of my life in 2011. Um, I think, hands down. Um, and they will chase a string just like a, a baby, like regular house cat. It's crazy. Uh, so for the first time in a long time, I felt like I was where I belonged. Like I was working on games for kids. I was getting to work with animals. I was getting to write. Um, instead of feeling like there was something wrong with me because I, I wasn't really having fun making a shooter when everyone else is clamoring to get into making AAA shooters. So at Microsoft, my significance grew to include uh, making inclusive games with an impact for good on topics that ended up being too niche for AAA. Um, my career happiness became directly related to how significant my work felt, and it, it fluctuated a lot. So when I first got there and I was working on Nat Geo, um, I was creating engaging experiences for kids and their families, so I was feeling pretty great. That was one of the high points in my career. Um, after that, I moved on to Project Spark, and you know, at first, that was also really awesome. It's a game about making games. We were working with kids. It started out as a kid's title, and then it shifted to a core title along with becoming an Xbox One game where that was the primary, that became the primary platform we were going to ship on. And just because of the constraints of AAA and the budget we were under and the, the way the backlog worked, like I just was continually disappointed when I tried to push for inclusion. Um, they did a pretty good, jo pretty good job of adding female characters, but uh, like we had no characters of color. Like you could tint skin tones, but that's not really the same at all. And uh, and everything we made was like the male characters first. The male characters had multiple body types. The female characters only ever had one. Uh, there were no female goblins at one point. I remember having a discussion about how female goblin wasn't a class. Like there was, you know, goblin shaman and goblin bruiser and then goblin female. And I was like, no, that, that's no. <laughs> uh, and uh, they eventually made her the, the Goblin Queen, but then that went into a pack that wasn't going to ship until the next year and ended up never shipping. Um, so I got laid off not too long after we shipped that October. And then I moved on to Loot Drop working remotely. And uh, I ended up helping them finish a f or, or redesign, I guess, a 
Facebook game, um, learning some stuff about free to play, which was new to me. Um, and then I'd never made a game on Facebook, so that was nice. So recently, significance means to me like making inclusive games that actively seek to do good. I founded Games to Love with a mission in line with that purpose. Um, and every game has two goals, inclusion and representation from day one, and then having an impact for good. And then I have some personal goals because I've been, you know, had one foot in publishing for so long, which is like, I wanna make this game by myself. I wanna revive my programming and artistic skills. And I wanna do something just self-enclosed and short and small. And that's, that's where the mirror came from. And uh, so changing light, someone's life or uh, helping another human being, uh, these are the things that felt impactful and lasting to me and the legacy that I wanted to leave behind. Um, so I mentioned legacy. Uh, in this era of games, our work won't last forever. Servers, servers shut down and games vanish from the App Store. Um, my earliest games on cartridge for GVA and, and uh, DS, like those are still playable. But I've worked on things that are gone forever, like Spark and Mag. Um, and your legacy isn't reviews or ratings. Um, it lives in the memories of those who've played your work. And it lives in the lives and the work of developers that you've mentored and befriended. Um, when you retire, they'll be the ones, they'll be the parts of you still making games. Um, this quote is from a book I actually read on the flight over here. Um, but it, it really resonated with me because we, we do all want to be remembered. So how's that working out for me? <laughs> um, earlier this year, I went to Train Jam and uh, my team made a fashion strategy game where the player uses the power of fashion to help a friend of theirs uh, combat negative self-talk. Um, our overall goal was to get the players to empathize with the character and, and uh, help them out. And, and then because we're all nicer to our friends about how they look than we are to ourselves, to also hopefully get players to use that as a mirror and be like, well, I should be kinder to myself. And, uh, you know, fashion is for everyone. Uh, our characters were a woman with a body type that you don't usually see in fashion games, Mimi, and then Finn, who was non-binary and a person of color. Uh, we loved making this, and uh, recently it got some attention at Indiecade uh, during the game tasting event. Uh, we were part of that, and then we were selected for the showcase at the end. So we, we demoed for four hours straight. <laughs> um, and then with the mirror, like how did I match up to my own criteria? Uh, some of the ways that I tried to do that are that the player is always referred to in the text as you, like, and it's a text game. So the intention is that the player always sees themselves in the game with their identity, um, their preferences, their uh, just themselves. Like, um, and then the, most of the NPCs, like I had the initial, I guess, instinct to make them male, and I ended up making them female. And then I ended up also making one of them non-binary. Uh, the, goal, the goal for the game, the way the game was for good, is that I wanted to reach and help players with negative body image issues. Um, so if I haven't already mentioned the elevator pitch for the game, um, The Mirror is a game about mirrors and body image based on a text based, based on a text RPG I played as a kid on that Apple IIe. And, uh, I won't go into like that whole Apple game because it involved a lot of dying because I didn't have a manual, but, uh, <laughs> but basically <laughs> it's a very similar thing that happens in the mirror where you wake up every morning and you consult the mirror to get your stats and the mirror will say, okay, you're super strong. You should go be a, a warrior or you're really intelligent. You should be a mage. And so you go on these adventures every day and they all end horribly. And you eventually start to wonder if maybe the mirror is lying to you about your stats. And that's supposed to lead to this aha moment of like, maybe I should stop listening to the mirror. Maybe I should stop listening in real life. And um, my win condition that I established before I put this out there 
uh, was that I would consider it a success if even one person told me that it had an effect on them. Um, so in January 2016, um, I stuck it up on newgrounds.com and itch.io. And uh, sometime after that, I did get more than one review telling me, yeah, this, this is really profound. This had a lot of an effect on me. Um, I also got a lot of comments of, this isn't a real game. Um, <laughs> but it was a pretty even split. And it got front paged, um, which was pretty awesome, because I wasn't expecting that. Um, and after the like intense vulnerability that I felt before I actually like pushed submit, um, that was really nice. Like I'd never put something out there before that was totally 100% my own. Um, so having to own like all of the bugs and warts and defects and what if my art wasn't that great? Like what if people hate it? Like overcoming that took a lot. So it was really validating to get feedback that hey, this was useful to me. This was this was worth my time playing it. And then just recently, uh, it was accepted into the IndieCade Festival as a digital selection. And I got to demo it for the first time um, to people live and watch how they reacted and, uh, and actually hear people laugh. I was like, oh, so that part was funny. That's great. Because uh, I tried, because I'm killing the player a lot, I tried to make it funny and amusing and at least like not super rage-inducing so they wouldn't quit before they figured it out. Uh, so it was really cool that some people did find it funny. Um, uh, but <laughs> I have not made any money on this game. Um, it's free by design because I wanted anybody who might benefit to be able to play it. Um, and I don't know that the games that I have planned after this are going to be any different. Uh, this is why I've been refining my craft as a metalsmith because uh, it's tough to get someone to spend a dollar, even you know, professional games on the App Store, and especially with the kind of touchy-feely games about feelings that I want to make. Uh, but I know I can make earrings that'll sell for like 20 or 40 or 50 bucks. Like, um, and it means having to take a step back uh, and know that my games will take longer to make, but it's how I've chosen to enable myself to keep doing it. So as I mentioned a little while back, significance in general for everyone, it evolves. You know, what you find significant now will likely change. Um, one way to figure out this might be happening is you know, dissatisfaction with a, jo a job or a genre that you used to really enjoy. Um, and as far as figuring out where it might be going next, like pay attention to the little twinges that you hear when one of your friends announces a job change, or when a certain topic comes up in conversation, or when you just read certain job postings and kind of feel like, yeah, that would be cool. Um, like these tiny stabs of, of wanting can reveal where you really want to be. Uh, or you may just suddenly realize one day that games are really missing this one thing and that you're the one that can make it happen. Um, for me, those little twinges, like. They weren't so subtle. They used to be about Kinect and Microsoft and you as the controller. Um, and lately, I've been wondering if you know, maybe in a couple years, it'll be VR. But right now, I'm kind of good where I'm at. So what now? What if you've identified what you want to do, but you don't have the skills or experience or funds to do it? Well, the good news is, as I said before, you can experience significance and purpose where you are now, uh, no matter what you're doing. Um, as you plan your path toward where you want to be. Um, and the other good news is that you've identified what you want so you can start to figure out the steps to get there. Um, and if you're looking for a new job, you may not be able to get your dream job yet, but you can pr probably get a job that will at least guide you in that direction and um, keep you skilled, give you skills that will keep you moving toward your goal. And if what you really want to do doesn't seem likely to happen as a day job, um, consider what you, might be able to, what you might be able to make as a side project. So perceived risks. <laughs> um, working in unfamiliar territory can, like, if you've made that change, 
can lead to feelings of imposter syndrome. Um, picking a new focus can come with fears about being stuck in that new field, like, and what if you don't like it? Um, but nothing's irreversible. Uh, and then change is always scary. Everyone always wonders if they'll be up to the task when they take on something new. And don't be afraid to fail. Uh, even, even failed endeavors are more satisfying than what you were doing before because you feel like your work matters and you've learned how to do it better the next time. So in summary, significance matters because it strongly influences our happiness. Um, it's work that you find meaningful, not what anyone else decides is important. Following where your new definition of significance leads is scary, but it's also really rewarding. And then your chosen significance will determine your legacy. So that's it. Um, does anyone have any questions? Uh, while you're thinking, this is my beagle puppy learning Jedi mind tricks on Halloween. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, so if you go back to the mirror, um, the way, like the, the look of the title and the, the image that you have would be that, I guess, um, feels like it's kind of a horror-ish game. So is that part of the goal of like trying to somehow sneakily get people who were not expecting to learn to love, love themselves more into that kind of game? So it's like, when, when they're not expecting it, was that part of the intention? Did everyone hear the question? OK, so the question was, uh, back when I showed the mirror, I showed the image with the, uh, the Grim Reaper on screen uh, it appearing in the mirror. And the question was, like, did I add that to try to I guess, throw people off the trail of a, a game that might be about feelings and make it seem more like a horror game? Um, the answer is yes and no. Uh, that particular screen isn't even in the build right now. It's the newest one. Um, when I usually show it, I usually use the kind of rainbowy vortex that um, appears whenever the, the mirror is generating your stats. Uh, the reason that the death image was created is that um, when I put it out there in January and then again at Indicade, I noticed that people tend to, tended to feel not like they were dying and progressing through the story, but that they were dying and starting over. And that's totally something I should have foreseen because that's how games work, is that you die and then you start your next life back at the beginning. You don't, it's not a progression. So I've been planning things to add to the game to make it seem more like, yes, you died, but you're still going through the story. So. The text changes, but that's pretty subtle. A lot of people don't notice that right away. Um, but I also have like a little skull counter that shows you how many times you've died. And then I want the mirror itself in the room to get increasingly more ominous. So it starts out just kind of blank. And I think that death image is part of the, prog the progression toward, yeah, the mirror is not your friend. Um, but it's, I've used it in a couple like promotional images, but it's not in the game yet. Anybody else? Well, thank you for coming, and thanks for being so patient. I really appreciate it. I was afraid the room was going to be entirely empty by the time I got here. <laughs>